Well, I had one of those phone calls, which usually seem to happen on a, on a Friday afternoon, uh, which is a phone call you never really want, saying that one of our pylons appeared to be leaning. No, no slippage on the wedge clumps on the far side. A little bit of strap damage on the top end on his faces. Uh, yeah, the bottom's completely gone. And 4ZC30 was located uh, near to a small village called Penryn Daedrite in North Wales, on the coastal area, on the, the marshland. When it was originally built, it was built on land, and with the erosion that's happened over the preceding 40 years, it's now stood in shallow water in the estuary. So with the onset of winter, it therefore gave us a real issue that we needed to get in there and address it. We had to communicate with people that we'd be closing the rail line and there'd be um, limited access to the, to the road network as well. The way our network's designed, given its critical national infrastructure, is you can afford to lose a bit of it and you can still reroute and supply power other ways. Because this is um, an area of special scientific interest, because it's on the edge of Snowdonia National Park, with National Trust land around it, you suddenly realise that you actually haven't got the emergency rights to immediately go in and fix it. What we were conscious of when we were pulling together the construction phase plan was the range of stakeholders that we did have to deal with and to bring on side and to communicate what we were trying to do, which was incredibly difficult because you're asking these people to do something in such a short space of time, which you know, in other times and other places would have taken many months to get in place. It was really important also that we did this through the medium of wash. So when we mailed the households, which we did practically every week in the early stages of this project, um, they were all bilingual. And the meetings we had with local councillors or local people, you know, we offer them to speak wash where we can. As it happens, um, there was a separate construction happening in, in that area on a, on a bridge that the council and network rail were involved with, so we worked really closely with them and with natural resources whilst to agree how we could use the, the shared construction site and the shared access so that we really limited our impact on the salt marsh. How to take it down is actually an engineering challenge in itself because it wasn't necessarily a stable structure for us to put overhead linesmen to climb up and remove it sort of bar by bar, which is how we would traditionally do it. So we decided actually the safest way was to demolish it with explosives. So we were able to do it in a very safe and responsible way. Because you, you pile down 18 metres, you don't really know the condition of the rock underneath the new tower base. So getting that first pile in for the first of the, of the four tower legs was a crucial point in the milestone. I'll always be grateful for the, the, the way that these people went above and beyond what would be required in normal working conditions, whether it be stakeholders, whether it be the guys working on the towers, whether it be people supporting the, the programme. It, it's amazing because that last bit when you erect the tower, um, it all comes together in just a, a few days. And the team did a great job of giving me a, a sunset picture uh, of the pond, and I can still clearly remember it. You know, that was a real satisfying evening when the picture came through. I knew right from the outset that even though this was an incredible engineering challenge to do it in such a short time scale, if National Grid couldn't do it, nobody could.